Okay, my brother Doug was about five years younger than I am, but we spent a lot of time playing around together because we were the only ones in our neighborhood that lived in that area. Okay, some of the things I remember is one time we went on a trip and just walking, we walked down to Riverdale Road from our street in 20th Street. And we, on the way, we'll collect pop bottles and then stop at the stores and get cash the money in and buy some candy and go on until we got to the end of up on Riverdale Road just to the first bridge. And we decided that was far enough to walk, and so we went back and collected bottles on the other side of the street. <laughs> and so we did that. Then another thing I remember about that was it was right after the war, and they brought a lot of stuff into the place up just below Wall, and some of our friends said, hey, you can go get some stuff there. And so we went down there, and I found some, some I guess it was things to lubricate the rifles and stuff and keep them good. And so we got a bottle of that, and a can of that, and brought it back home, and that was probably illegal, but we didn't know any different, and there wasn't any stopping us. And then another thing I remember one time, he was taking off his clothes to get him ready for bed, and mom and dad were gone, and so he was ticked off that he had to get ready, and he flipped his boot off of his shoe and went clear across the kitchen and out the back door and through the window there. And another time we shot an arrow through the side window and my dad got ticked off of that and so he covered up the window and it wasn't there anymore. <laughs> there. And then another time was during Brigham City Peach Days, we walked down the street there and I, we came back and so he pulled me over the side and I looked up and I was on television. And so, and my friends and Doug's friends said, hey, we saw you on television <laughs> there. Okay, and then we had a ditch down behind our home there. It had a little bit of water running from through it and would go down there and play by it. And we decided there wasn't enough water in there. And we found a board and put it over the tunnel mouth and then it filled up the ditch and would have fun throwing the floating logs and our sticks, we didn't have logs, sticks down there until we got called in, would pull the thing out and the water would go rolling back there. One day we forgot to pull the board out. We came back the next day and the tunnel was about 400 feet down the road there. And the guys were looking at us and said, do you know anything that happened? I said, never saw anything. We weren't here. <laughs> Okay, then we built a hut behind our garage it there one year, and we had fun doing that. Then some kids came down the hill, up the, I mean up the lane, the lover's lane we called it, and they started shooting BB guns at us. So Dad called the police, and the police came, and I still remember that. The police officer said, hey, call them to stop. And the kids kept running, and he pulled out his gun and shot in the ground. And they stopped for some reason and came back with their hands up. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him, but he took him to this car and talked about him. And then we also went to dig tunnels to crawl through. We built one on 21st and Jefferson, where in a house, a vacant lot by my friend's house, and we crawl around to that. We had quite a big tunnel. It was easy digging. And another time, we'd go down to the tunnels in the under the sidewalks in the tabernacle that when they were building it. And they were dark down there, so we'd bring a candle, light it, and then go through the tunnel and explore it them. And it was quite a fun place to <laughs> go there. We had a lot of fun there. He's he was a good friend there, and he still was. And then one more, let's see, is the, I think I've got it all. Uh, yeah, that's it. I just wanted to know he was a good brother. We'd go out at, after 
just before he died, would go out and to his place and play games. And we had a good time there, and he was a good friend. And that's all. Thank you. time with it and I just had a hard time trying to figure out what I wanted to say and to remember my dad by and um, hope that I do a good enough job to make him proud and and that I can honor him but um, before my um, dad passed away we, we um, he was very adamant about not wanting a funeral and I think that when most of us found out that he didn't want to have a funeral, we were pretty upset about it. <laughs> and I think deep down some of us thought that we were going to have a funeral for him anyway after he passed. <laughs> Just, um, and there wouldn't be anything he could do about it. He couldn't, didn't have a say after he was gone. But um, anyway, I think it, we jokingly said after he passed that it took a pandemic for him, to, you know, that he passed, it, he passed away during a pandemic and, um, it made it impossible for us to hold a funeral, so we just decided we'd just kind of share some memories about him instead. And thinking, going back and thinking about what memories I wanted to share, is, there's so many of them to even decide what I wanted um, to talk about. But two years ago when my dad was diagnosed with kidney cancer, um, Laurie had the idea of, of um, compiling a book of our memories um, for my dad, and we gave it to him on his birthday. and. So it, we each decided at that time to get a copy of our own, which I'm so grateful that I did because it gives us an opportunity to go back and look at pictures and hear stories that all of us remember and that the grandkids remember of him. <laughs> so reviewing that last night, there was a few things that kind of stood out that all of us, like made an impression for all of us. And one of the things that was talked about the most was our, our family vacations and Growing up, money was always tight, and we didn't ever, were never able to take a lot of vacations. But there were a few that stood out to the most to us, and we, our our vacations were road trips, and the road trips were always the best memories that we had. And we took trips down to New Mexico and Las Vegas and California, and went up to Washington a couple of times, and visited many numerous state and national parks along the way and we drive out to Roosevelt to visit Amber and her family and we drive to wherever Laurie was whether it was in Illinois and South Dakota a couple of times but a favorite memory that we had when we were little was the trip that we a two-week road trip that we took down to Philmont um, which was a scout camp down in New Mexico and there were five of us so all five sisters <laughs> Catherine was just a baby and my parents and they had, I don't know, some of you might remember our little brown Dodge Aries that we had. <laughs> I don't know how we fit five kids, two parents, and then everything that we needed for that trip because we camped along the way. So we had all of our camping stuff, our tent, our food, our bedding, everything inside of that little car <laughs> and drove for two weeks with our good friends, the Christiansons. And, you know, at the couple of nights that we were supposed to be camping, it was pouring rain and dad didn't want to have to pitch a tent in the rain and so we were we were blessed one night to come across a place that had some little mini cabins that you could stay in and they happened to have a vacancy and we thought that that was the best thing ever <laughs> we just talked about that and just loved it and we were down in New Mexico and they were having a big flood down there and um, the roads were flooded over and we couldn't get through and I remember dad having to try to figure out how to to get around, you know, to go around it and not having GPS back then, it was all paper maps. I remember mom had a big map that she'd pull out. They would pull over off the side of the road and figure out what road we could take to kind of get around it. And we'd just drive along until we couldn't go that way any longer. And so dad just loved taking, taking those road trips and he just loved being in the car. And I just remember, you know, couple of times not knowing where we were going and or he wouldn't know where we we're going but he never seemed worried about it he would just find another way and and just go for a drive or he'd come across the road and say I wonder where this road would take you will take us and the next thing I know we were going down the road and ended up being some of the best best times that we had and 
you know, and, and if he ended up going to a, a place that he'd already been, he'd find a new, a new road to travel to get there just so he could see some different scenery. So it's kind of, you know, it's been special memories for us to remember these road trips that we took, we took together. Sorry, just a second. Another thing that was mentioned by the family um, was that we all loved his Dutch oven cooking and dad was, was really good at his Dutch oven cooking and our family really enjoyed when he would do his barbecue spare ribs, his baked beans and potatoes and the cobblers and the pineapple upside down cake and we just, we always just were just in heaven every time he decided he was going to cook and oftentimes he would invite the missionaries to come over for dinner and we always were secretly hoping that it was going to be Dutch oven cooking and he's, he loved doing that with the scouts and he was really involved with the scouting program and we met a lot of friends he met a lot of friends that way and um, we just always had a had a good time when he was Dutch oven cooking and dad um, I think taught all loved to fish and it started even when he was a small boy growing up close to the Ogden River he was always fishing and and he continued through his adulthood and it would take us as kids along with him and I know that I'm sure when he did take us he was he was a real good sport about it and I'm sure he didn't get a lot of fishing done at that time with always trying to help us get our hooks set up and untangling our lines when they got stuck and but he never really complained he just he just enjoyed being out there with us and we enjoyed having those memories of him and we have a lot of fond memories of camping dad loved to camp and spend time outdoors and we especially loved um, going up to lava and spending time up there and we looked forward to the times when we could drive into town and go swimming in the pool or down to the hot pots and we just think it just helped our family all enjoy the mountains and being outdoors because of him and dad was just very outgoing and friendly and he was very easy for him to make friends and I just remember times when I'd go with him to the store and he would you know go into some place whether it be the store or whatever and I just remember this one time specifically that we had to wait in line for a while while we were checking out and he just starts up this conversation with with this person in front of him and they were talking for a long long time and and when it was his turn to go and pay and we were walking out to the car I just asked him I said dad how do you how do you know this person he's like oh I don't I just met him right now you know <laughs> <laughs> he just he just could go anywhere and into a place and not know anybody and he'd come out with two new friends and so he just it was just really great that he was just like to get along with with people so well and um some, he had a real great sense of humor, although sometimes people didn't know if he was really joking or not. <laughs> and several of my friends, I remember, a lot of times were scared to come over because they were were scared of his kind of, they thought he was kind of his gruff personality and they weren't sure if he was joking or not. But he did like a good joke and um, and even in his last last days, he, he kept a sense of humor. <coughs> when he was admitted to the hospital and he spent two days up there alone and none of us were able to come up because of COVID-19 and anyway on this his last day at the hospital Becca and my mom were able to go up t to him and they were in his room and he was having a lo more lucid moment and he came in uh, the nurse came in and asked him how he was doing and he said how with how oh how are you feeling how are you feeling and he says with my hands <laughs> that was kind of a a good joke that he would always he would tell all the time anytime anybody asked him how he's feeling he'd say with his hands <laughs> anyway um there's a, a few um he had some funny and some memorable sayings that he'd say and i took most of these from laurie's in her from her book <laughs> So I'm just going to share a few of what she had. Um, so, Dad, are you going to the show? Laurie, no. Dad, then why are you picking your seat? <laughs> Another one was, Laurie would say, Dad, did you get a haircut? Dad, no, I got all of them cut. <laughs> and the next, you know, and then um, 
during his hospital stay and, and when he was in the nursing home, the nurses would come in and they would have to like prick his finger. And so she, the nurse would say, which finger do you want me to poke? And dad would say, yours. <laughs> <laughs> And then growing up, we'd often hear Dad say, I wouldn't sell my kids for any kind of money, but on the right day, I'd give them away. <laughs> <laughs> or oftentimes when he'd answer the phone, you'd hear him say, Joe's Bar and Murphy's Pool Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and then Adam had mentioned one in his book, too, about when he had asked uh, my dad if he could marry Laurie. And my dad says, well, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> so... Dad just had a real great sense of humor, and that's one of the things that we'll miss the most. And it's hard to say goodbye to him. And I'll always think of Dad when I hear the Beach Boys or Kenny Rogers' song "Coward of the County." I'll miss his big teddy bear hugs and the tickles that he always tried to sneak in. Thank you for everything that you taught me, Dad, for your love and your example, for raising me in the gospel, and for sharing your testimony. And I'm grateful to know that I'll be able to live with him again. I'll have fond memories of you, and I'll always remember you, and you've touched so many lives. The world will be a different place without you in it. I love you, and I'll miss you. me grow and I just want to let you know how much it means to have a grandpa like you. Here are some of the memories we have been through. From sleepovers in the front room. With the TV ready to resume. To having family game night even though at times you had to be right. You're gentle and gruff. Once you said it that was enough. <laughs> family road trips throughout the U.S too many adventures to choose which was best. Oregon, Nevada, Illinois, over to Lari's in South Dakota, and Ambers in Roosevelt. One thing's for sure, buckle up and wear your seatbelt. Because Grandpa drives fast and doesn't like to take a rest, except when he pushes his bladder to the test. <laughs> up, up, up in your big, big chair, hugging you feels like a teddy bear. Hiding Easter eggs in the Ogden Cemetery, when you smile, the room becomes luminary. Sneaking fireballs and peppermint candies, you are most comfortable in your jammies. Even though I might not say, now that your hair starts to turn gray, I'm truly blessed to be your granddaughter you, and to have a grandpa like you. Thanks for being someone I can look up to. Love, Ashley. When I was in high school, um, I had a writing assignment um, to develop an analogy. And I really kind of stood over this assignment for a long time um, until I decided to, to write an analogy to explain our family. And I, I remember back at that time how I really had a hard time until I finally decided to focus on my family. And I feel like it just kind of spilled out on paper. And um, So this is the analogy that I wrote those many years ago and we just are, we just kind of chuckle how perfectly it, it explains our family so I want to share that with you it's called the perfect Sunday picture yourself tediously enduring a hot summer's day while wishing for nothing other than a cool refreshing treat you then find yourself rushing to the nearest ice cream parlor to order your favorite dessert a chocolate sundae to your dismay you find out that the parlor is missing several of the Sunday's ingredients Reluctantly, you purchase an ice cream cone rather than settle for something less than the perfect Sunday. My family is just like a Sunday. Each member is a critical ingredient which cannot be left out. The variety of the ingredients enhances the flavor of the treat. Let's take a closer look. The base of the Sunday is critical, the two scoops of ice cream. 
The ice cream represents my parents. Each one is a different flavor that complements the other. My dad is chocolate for his rich, lively manner, but my mother is vanilla for her gentle, quiet approach at life. The richness of the chocolate can sometimes be rather harsh, but the vanilla always manages to mellow things out and put them back into balance. The ice cream now needs to be transformed into a sundae. Time for the toppings. The toppings represent the children. The first topping to come into contact with the ice cream is the chocolate syrup, my eldest sister Gwen. The syrup sets the base for the other toppings. It is well liked and easily complements the other toppings. The syrup is sweet and slowly yet thoughtfully spreads throughout, flavoring the whole sundae. The syrup is then joined by nuts, my sister Rebecca. The nuts add texture to the ice cream. They are the outgoing or the crunch of the sundae. They are in no way timid and are in several places at the same time. You want something vivacious? On to the sprinkles. The sprinkles, my sister Amber, are the lively part of the sundae. They add fun, excitement, and entertainment. Oops, don't forget to slide in those long slices of banana. That's me. <laughs> the banana is soft and gentle. It's not very colorful, but adds a lot of flavor. <laughs> Time to add a little depth to the sundae. Spray on the whipped topping, my younger sister, Catherine. The whipped topping is full of air or sarcasm. <laughs> it adds volume to the sundae. It's fun, but beware, the whipped topping can't be neglected for long or else it will go runny. <laughs> now for the final touch, the cherry. My brother Clifton is the youngest. The cherry, being the only one, usually gets attention first. The cherry is unique, but is overly privileged by being placed on the top. <laughs> now that we've constructed the perfect Sunday or family, hopefully you've seen the importance of each item. I know my family would not be the same if one of the ingredients were missing. We're gonna, we're gonna miss you, Dad. We're gonna miss your chocolate. We know we'll be together again. We love you. My sweet dad, when um, they were expecting Gwen, showed up to the hospital with one yellow rose. And then when they had Becca, they added, he added two yellow rows. And then when he had Amber, he came with three yellow roses. And then when Laurie came, there was four yellow roses. And then when I came, my dad brought five yellow roses. And then when the boy that they finally wanted came, he came with five yellow roses and one red rose. And in honor of our mom, when you mix the red and the yellow together, you get orange, which is our mother. We love them very much and we're so grateful for them, especially our dad. We're so grateful to have him bring us into the family and look at his grandchildren and his prosperity. We're so grateful for him. And so in honor of him, we each have yellow roses for the girls, red roses for the boys, and one orange rose for my mom. We love you, Dad.
listen to his words. Let them come alive if we know.